Howdy again, everybody. Welcome back to the Four Shop Yard. This is Ryan, and today I'm going to give you a little bit of history on the Ford Bronco. And now, the Ford Bronco, it originally started out, you know, in 1966 was the first generation. And um, production began for the first gen in August of 1965. And... Um, the first gen in, um, into production in 1977. So that's about 11 years, uh, an 11 year run for the first generation. Okay. Now, um, you can get them in a three door SUV, a two door pickup, or a zero door roadster. Okay. And they were known, the class, they were classified as a compact SUV. So, uh, the, the powertrains were, um, the powertrains consisted of, you could get a, a 170 cubic inch 2.8 liter straight six, uh, straight six motor. You could get a 200 cubic inch 3.3 liter straight six motor, a 289 cubic inch 4.7 liter small block V8. Or you could get the 302 in, uh, cubic inch 4.9 liter small block V8. And as far as the transmissions, you had two you could choose from. And those were the three-speed manual or the three-speed automatic. Okay. It had a 92-inch wheelbase. And it was 151.5 inches long with 68.5 inches wide. And it, the height of it was about uh, 61.71.6 inches. That's how tall it was. Okay. Um, let's see. The Bronco was intended to be a, um, it was like, it was a, um, competitor for the Jeep CJ5. And also the International Harvester Scout. And the Toyota Land Cruiser. And everybody knows I hate Toyota. So there you go. Immediately. Uh, the International Harvester Scout and the Jeep CJ5 was immediately better than any Toyota. Okay. Now. Coming to. Um, here we go. Initially selling well. Following the introduction of the Chevrolet Blazer, um, Jeep and the International Scout from Scout Two from 1969-1974, demand shifted between the SUVs with better on-road capability, and which led to a, a decline in demand for the Bronco. And um, as far as the Bronco chassis goes. The first Jim Bronco is built upon a chassis developed specifically for the model range, okay? And it was shared with no other Ford or Lincoln Mercury vehicle, built on a 92-inch wheelbase, sized between CJ5 and the International Scout. Only an inch shorter than the later CJ7. The Bronco used box section body on frame construction. Okay. Now, um, all examples were sold with a four-wheel drive, a shift-on-the-fly Dana 20 transfer case with locking hubs. <laughs> that was what was standard with it. Okay. And the rear axle was a four nine-inch axle. With Hotchkiss drive and leash springs. The front axle was a Dana 30 replaced by a Dana 44 in 1971. Okay. And so, um, in the larger four trucks, they used what were known as twin I beam, twin I beams. 
for the larger Ford trucks. The Bronco used a radius arm to locate the coil spring front axle, along with a lateral track bar, allowing for a 34-foot turning circle, long wheel travel, and anti-dive geometry, which was good for snow plowing. A heavier duty suspension was option along with front um, air front springs. So right there, you know um, it was immediately better built than any GM blazer or um the GM, uh, Jimmy, whatever you want to call it, immediately better built. Now, um, coming into the sixth generation of the Bronco, and as I put in yesterday on my Bronco video, only for the 1991 model year, only 25,001 units were sold for that one year. Okay. But the silver anniversary was the first model year that actually had a leather interior. So, coming to 2021, <laughs> um, they have the new Bronco. It's, it's nothing like the old ones. I'll give you that much. And so, um, you can get it in a, they're still considered a mid-size SUV. You can get it in a two-door convertible or a four-door convertible. So, um, pretty much like the old ones, okay? Pretty much like the old ones. But, um, as far as the powertrain goes, in today's Bronco, the 2020 and 2021, they have a 2.3 liter V6, uh, no, 2.3 liter four-cylinder turbo motor, a 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6 twin-turbo motor, and uh, the 2.3-liter four-cylinder puts out 270 horsepower, and the 2.7-liter EcoBoost puts out, the V6 puts out 310 horsepower, which to me means nothing, Okay. I mean, that really means nothing. As far as transmissions go, they had the, they had the seven, the new ones had the seven speed get rag. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, otherwise known as the MT1 uh, or MT1550 manual or a 10 speed four GM select shift automatic. And I've heard people say, oh, them 10 speed that Ford and GM may have problems. Da, 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 da. Not on Ford's part, on GM's part, they had problems. Because, as anybody knows, I don't care, you know, oh, Ford's better, GM's better, Ford better, GM, blah, blah, blah. I don't care nothing about that. GM, their quality control has been going down here, hill since 2014. Because if I had a choice between a GM vehicle of today, 2021, <clears throat> or 2013 and back, excuse me, guys, I would definitely choose a 2013 back than a 2014 to now, 2021. The quality is just not there. I mean, I'm seeing, you know... <sighs> I'm actually seeing the transmissions explode, the rear ends explode. I heard of a guy, this is no lie, I heard of a guy, you know, he was coming, he had a, I believe it was a 2018 Chevrolet Silverado, and it had the 10 speed that Ford and GM made. He said he was going across the bridge on his way home from work. All of a sudden, he just hears a loud explosion. Looks in the rear view mirror, and it's just, it was a mess. So, come out, come to find out, it was his transmission that exploded all over the highway. That's what it was. Okay. So, 
that's just, I mean, they just don't have quality control now. I mean, the, the, it's just garbage. I mean, like I said in a previous video, 2021 Silverado. I seen a guy, he bought, a, like I said, a brand new 21 Silverado. His payments were almost $1,000 a month. 1,800 miles, his motor blew up. 1,800 miles. If I'd have had that truck and it blew up at 1,800 miles, I would be furious. Absolutely freaking furious. That's why I don't buy GM products. Not a new one anyway. If I had my choice, I'd go out and buy an old one, a 2013 or back. I mean, they're just better built. Yeah, they're not going to hold The older ones won't hold up as well as an older Ford, but still. I mean, you know. Overall, GM, I don't care, new, old, they just, the quality is, just, they're just cheaper made. I mean, I like GM, they're just cheaper made. And they took money from the government in the big bailout. So, when Ford didn't. And I've heard people try to say, people sending me little, little, um, things saying, oh, yeah, Ford did take a bailout money, or Ford did this, or Ford, no, they didn't. Okay, no, they didn't. I got proof because I talked to one of the people at Ford and I asked them, did y'all take money? No, we did not. They did not take money from the government. I don't care what nobody says. Anybody says any different, they're lying. Okay, that's what I said. If you try to tell me any different, you're pretty much lying because I talked to the people. And they said, no, Ford never took a, a, a bailout money. So... But getting back to the Bronco 2021, um, the new 21 Broncos have a 100.4 inch wheelbase, uh, 174.8 inches long. They're 75.9 to 79.3 inches, 75.9 to 79.3 inches wide. And they're 70.2 to 71.4 inches tall. Okay. And then it says here, um, Ford released a sixth generation Bronco for model year 2021 after the nameplate's 25 year highest. So let's see. It is 1996. So 2006, 2016, 7, 8, 9, 20. Yeah, it's 25 years, definitely. Okay. Um, styling recalls many of the elements from the 66 to set, the first gen series, 66 to 77, the 11 year, first gen 11 year run. Okay. And the design chief's 76 Bronco was digitally scanned as a reference during the design process. So. And for the first time in 2021, the Bronco is a mid-size SUV, bringing its chassis and powertrain closer in size to the Ford Ranger. And the Ford Ranger, as everybody knows, it has four-cylinder and V6 too. And so... Um... Also, the new Rangers for 20, you know, 2019-2021, they are a direct competitor for the Jeep Wrangler. And once again, the Bronco is offered in a two-door or four-door SUV, each reconfigured as a convertible. Now, that's all I'll say on the Bronco. I'm going to get back to GM for a minute. Okay, I'm going to get back to GM just for a minute. And I'm going to tell you guys um, some things. So, as I said, I don't hate GM products. But they took money from the government. Their quality control is absolute garbage. And they're just, they're just you know... I don't, I mean, you know, that's just what I'm saying. They're garbage. You know, even the older ones, I mean, okay, let's compare a 1990, 
Let's see. Let's compare a 1991. No, let's compare a 1994 uh, Ford F-150 XLT like mine to a 1994 Chevrolet Silverado K-1500. Um, as far as the body and all that, as far as problems on the 94s, between the 94 and 50, I don't see the Fords having any problems. Now, I do see, I don't see, you know, like Jim, I don't see any paint issues, like the paint peeling or fading or bubbling on the Fords, like I do the Chevrolet Silverado k 1500s from that year. I don't see the interiors getting all worn and, and falling apart like the Chevrolets do. I don't see the dashes cracking like the 94K 1500s do. Um, the welds don't break for the exhaust. And I've seen this all, and like I said, I've seen this myself personally okay you know they're just they're cheap for chef, gm is cheaper made i don't care if it's new old i don't give a crap what it is they're just cheaper made in that range anyway as i'm speaking but you know between a 94 if if, if you lined up a 94 f-150 right next to a 94K1500 Silverado. Today, being uh, 28, 27, 28 years old, if it hadn't been redone, if it hadn't been repainted or nothing like that, and it's all got the original paint, I guarantee you the Ford would be in better, much better shape than the Chevrolet. On the Ford, the paint wouldn't be faded the uh, the wells wouldn't be breaking, the interior wouldn't be falling apart, the dash sure as hell wouldn't be cracking. You know, the, the trim pieces on the inside wouldn't be falling apart like I've seen with my own eyes. Okay, and um, you know, I mean, it's just it's just better built. Fords are just better built overall. I don't care. I mean, once again, I like GM products, but they're just cheaper made. I mean, you know. I'll give you an example. If I had the choice between going out and buying a brand new 2021 Ford F-150 versus a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado, both with V8, I would definitely get the Ford over the Chevrolet because Ford has much better quality control. I mean, I don't see transmissions going out, motors blowing up, rear ends exploding, you know, I, you know paint bubbling, nothing like that. I don't see that in the forest because they're so well made. And, um, just, I mean, like I said, in the new Silverados, I've personally seen the motors and transmissions going out less than 2,000 miles, and you're paying for a a fifty, sixty thousand dollar truck, and you got a almost a thousand dollar truck painted every month. You know, I mean, I don't care if it is covered under warranty, I'm still gonna be pissed. That's just the way that it goes. I mean, I'm still gonna be absolutely pissed. Okay, so that's just you know. Now, when you're talking about um, let's go back a little bit further than the 90s. Let's go back to the, you know, the, uh, okay, I got one for you. Let's go back to the 19, um, no, nah, I won't go back that far. But just in general, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll always be a Ford man. I mean, you know, what you like is your opinion. I mean, you like Ford, you like Dodge, you like Chevrolet. Anybody knows me knows I like every car brand ever made out there except for four. Toyota, Honda, Lexus, and Acura. Why? 
because they're Japanese absolute pieces of shit. That's what they are. And they don't hold up over time. People say, oh, they'll go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand miles trouble free, da, da, da. Uh, no, they won't. Because I've never seen it. Never seen it. Never seen it. If you wanted, if you went out looking for a new truck and you chose a Toyota or a Honda over a Ford or a Dodge, you a complete fool. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. You know, you're, you're a fool for that. American-made vehicles are so much better. Now, Japanese, the only Japanese vehicles I would own, Nissan, Hyundai, and Nissan, 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 um, um, Infinity, Infinity, which are just fancy Nissans. People say, oh, them Infinities are endless money pits. They don't hold up over time. I'll say it again like I've said in all the other videos. This is my belief. As long as you take care of a car, I don't care how, how fancy it is. I don't care if it can drive itself. If you change the oil, the filter, the transmission fluid. If you change the oil and filter every 5,000 miles and the transmission fluid and filter every 40 or 50,000 miles. I guarantee you, you won't have one bit of problem. And if you do have a problem, that's on you because you're, you're not maintaining your vehicle right. That's all I'm saying. Everybody, I don't care if it's a Mercedes, a Lamborghini, a Porsche. If you keep the oil and filter changed, it'll last forever. Transmission fluid and filter changed, it'll last forever. That's just common decency. Common sense. And if you don't do that, then you're just plumb lazy. That's all you are. Just plumb lazy. If you, if you can't do that, it's too simple maintenance. Oil on filter and transmission fluid filter. You're just, you know, just sorry as hell. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. I've seen people, you know, they get a car. It could be used and, you know, they might change the oil one time and not change it again for four or five years. And then it's burning oil, or maybe it even blows up. You're just lazy and sorry. You don't want to spend the 50 bucks every few months or, you know, you know, whenever to keep your fluids changed regularly. You're just sorry. I mean, you know, that's just the way that it goes. I mean, basic maintenance on any car, and it'll last a million miles. That's my philosophy. I've got a 2001 Ford Expedition with 240,000 miles. I keep the oil and filter changed every 3,000 miles, and the transmission fluid changed every 40. The damn thing ain't giving me no problems yet. It does need a tune-up, and it does need a couple of other things, but that's just basic maintenance that I intend to keep done. And I've said again, I've said again, I'll say it again, in the previous videos I've done, I've seen Ford Expeditions with 950,000 miles original motor and transmission. All original. They've never been touched other than the oil has been changed, the oil and filter, and the transmission fluid and filter have been changed. That's it. And, of course, brake pads and, you know, basic tune-up and things like that. 950,000 miles, all original. You couldn't get that out of a, out of a 2001 Silverado. Yeah, they're better built than the ones are today, but still, you're not going to get that far. You might get a couple hundred, two hundred fifty thousand miles, but that's going to be it. I mean, that's just the way that it goes. But, again, I'm no professional mechanic, but I have been around cars and worked on cars since I was, God, I don't know, probably, oh. Uh, At least eight to ten years old. I've been working, changing oil and things like that. And like I said, I'm no professional. I mean, I I have no, I don't know. You know, I've never actually torn down a motor all the way to the bare block and put it back together. Now, yes, I've torn them down to the bare block, but put them back together, no. 
because I don't know, I don't have all the necessary things I need, tools and, you know, gauges and whatever you need to do all that, but I know basic maintenance. I know what cars are good, what cars are bad. And I'll throw this in once again. I don't believe in, when it comes to cars and whether you're buying a car or selling a car, I don't believe in depreciation. I don't believe in age or mileage being important in any way, shape, or form. I mean, because that's just me, you know. Um, you know, yeah, of course things wear out over time, but it ain't gonna wear out that damn quick, really. I mean, if I mean, oh, they want an eighteen five for this, you know. Four and it's got 300,000 miles. 18,000 for 300,000 miles? It's a Ford, so I'll buy it. Okay? Or any vehicle for that matter. Depreciation. Okay. Let me give it to you this way. Let's take my 1974 Ford Maverick as an example. It's got 93,000 original miles on it. Yes, it needs... Um... I could probably get the rest of the stuff and have it all done for let, under, you know, $5,000, most definitely. But let's just say, you know, of course I'll never sell it because it's Pawpaw's family heirloom not going nowhere. But let's just say I had one identical to it, identical to it, same color, same motor, same everything. Let's say I wanted to sell it. Let's say it was, you know, okay, let's just say, you know, Identical. You know, people look up, oh, it ain't worth, but, you know, five to $800. To you, that's what they, that's what the book says. That's not what I say. Them Mavericks are going, my Maverick cost my great-grandma $3,500 new. Straight out, $3,500. So if I had one identical to the one I got now, and I was going to sell it, I don't care if it had two million miles on it. I would want sticker price, and that's thirty five hundred dollars. Because yeah, that's you know. Oh, I wouldn't give you that much for it. It's not worth that much. Well, either you give me that amount of money, or you don't buy it. Because I don't believe in depreciation when it comes to cars. Even okay, let's take. Well, I'll give you another example. We'll take my ninety four F one fifty. No, I'll, I'll do my 97 Expedition. It's got 200,000 miles on it. Yeah, it needs an intake and all put back on. It needs a lot of good, a little bit of work. It ain't a lot, you know, but I looked up the blue book value for it, and it's only like uh, 1800 anywhere from five to eight, twelve, something like that, $100, $1,500. Well, if I ever wanted to sell it, I don't care, I mean, you know, uh, which I'm not going to. I don't get rid of my vehicles. I keep them for the rest of my life because they make me happy. That's just the way things are. I would want the, you know, what is it, $26,000, $28,000 it was new. That's what I'd get out of it, and, and you'd be a fool not to pay that kind of money. That's just the way things are. But. Getting back to the Ford again as the, the final chapter of this video. I've said it a million times, and I will say it again. And nothing can change my mind. Can't change mine, my daddy's, nobody's mind. Ford did not take money from the government in the big bell out of 2008-9. They didn't. I don't care who can say, who can look it up on Google and, yeah, they did, yeah, they did. That's the internet. I got proof. I talked to one of the people at Ford, and they said, no, they didn't. So, I know. And anyone who tries to tell it, say different, you're a liar. That's what I said. This has been Ryan from the Ford Shopyard. If you like this con content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you, guys.